What's up guys, Meta recently had an event where they announced their new virtual reality product, Project Cambria. And so that's what I wanna talk about in this video and let you guys know what my thoughts are and ultimately how this sort of fits into the overall valuation for Meta. So guys, while you guys hit that like button, I'm gonna run the intro. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And so you guys may not realize, it's actually been a year since Facebook announced their name change to Meta in sort of that rebranding effort as they wanted to sort of build out the metaverse. And because it's been a year, you can see that now Zuckerberg has the opportunity to show in the Meta conference their sort of like higher level headset, which I believe is what they were referring to as Project Cambria. And at the beginning of the event, Mark Zuckerberg, he essentially promised like a big step forward. And I do believe that it is a big step forward. Um, but I don't think that overall it's going to be a game changer. And so he did describe it as, uh, some of the most amazing technology of our generation. Um, I don't know. You can see that this is what it looks like. It's better. It's more compact. It's still a little bit clunky though, but you know, I think the most important thing is that it allows you to see outside while you can use the metaverse itself. So it's almost like an augmented or actually it is an augmented reality. Uh, type of device. So that is good for certain types of applications. But overall, you know, the Wall Street Journal reviewed it. They said that it's more comfortable. It has a better display quality and new controllers. Also, it tracks your eyes and your face. So your avatar can now make the same funny faces you do, which I mean, I'm sure there's use cases for that. But the question is, who is this meant for? And so effectively, they're saying is that these features are for architects, engineers and designers. Uh, in addition to any sort of early adopters who just want to move beyond flat screen. So I can see that making sense. What I like is what you see in the picture there, because I like the idea where I can just fire up my computer from anywhere. And I love sort of like the augmented reality space where I can just have sort of like a small keyboard with me at all times, even if the keyboard is just on the back of my sort of like cell phone or something. And I can just fire up and do any work that I need to anywhere. So like this makes sort of like work from home even better because you can essentially work from anywhere. Right now I have three or four screens. I guess I got four screens that I use every day as I'm sort of like modeling out things and researching, but how cool would it be if I could have like six screens, but it's like augmented reality. And so I really like this and I would definitely be an early adopter if it's as versatile as it looks to be in this picture. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research here. Now, this is what the Wall Street Journal said is better with this new device. It says that the openings allow you to have some peripheral vision. So that's really good. So you don't walk into things. I mean, one of the problems with sort of like augmented reality, virtual reality is that your eyes are shut off to the real world. And you know, we've seen a lot of like TikToks and whatever people like walking into things, including the TV damaging stuff around the house. And so you don't want that. Also, they're saying that another thing that's better is that inside the headset, there's five, sensors that are pointed at your face so your avatar can mimic your expressions including smiling frowning and blinking so i think that's cool that's another step in the right direction of becoming more and more realistic now what's not better is that the battery only lasts between one and two hours so for my use case personally it becomes less viable i want to be able to be untethered here now i understand like i could use this in my car like i could work from my car just plug it into the jack in the car or i can work from any room in the house but how about when it comes to like working from just like away from the office, like at like sort of like a coffee shop where I don't have access to an outlet. So here's where it becomes a bit of a challenge, not unlike um, a very high functioning computer. Like for example, the computer that I use to edit these videos, the battery life on it only lasts around one or two hours. And that's because it's so high functioning that it's just a drain on the battery. And so I always have to be plugged in with this machine. So it's not unlike that, but how cool would it be if I could just be sitting on the couch or in the car or anywhere and editing sort of like videos for this channel, that'd be amazing. I just want to be untethered from the office. And that's what I'm really looking for both with just like my work and with like the YouTube stuff as well. So I'm going to keep sort of keeping an eye on this as the developments come through, but I see potential here, but overall for most people, I don't see adoption yet. And what they're saying is that the dock itself only takes two hours to charge the headset to maximum capacity. So you might be able to squeeze in two decent metaverse meetings a day, 
And uh, they made a quirky joke here, which is funny, which is like, it might be the best selling point. Now, now someone might, like myself, sometimes I'm in meetings for like eight hours a day. And so it just wouldn't work. Not not the way that it is right now. But once again, you know, you could just sit at your desk and, and be at meetings all day plugged in. But then what's the difference? You might as well just be on Zoom. So doesn't make sense yet. Now, they did go on to say that the mixed reality hardware is rapidly improving and getting into the hands of developers. You know, they could surprise us with some killer apps. And so we'll, we'll We'll see what that means. I like the idea of a simple app where you can actually project what you look like, exactly who you are, beside like sort of like a fireplace or in a room or somewhere. And so you can really get together. And like that would be really cool on the holidays with family. So instead of just calling family, you can like sit around the room with them in sort of like a virtual reality space, but we're nowhere near that right now, just to be sure. And so the best thing you can do is zoom right now, but I think it's coming. It might take like 10 or 15 years for that to be a reality, but we're moving in the right direction. But once again, until that's sort of like a reality, it's not going to make sense. The other place where I could see this making a lot of sense is if you know you can sort of incorporate into like dating apps so like match.com could use this so like virtual reality dating is just safer and more accessible uh the other place where i could probably see this working as well is you know you're putting on a headset and you're walking through a house that you're looking to buy so zillow might be another company that could utilize this so there's a lot of um, use cases another one actually that some of you may not think about i used to think about this all the time is how can you make live stand-up comedy more accessible now you guys know that i before starting the youtube channel i did stand-up comedy all over the city of toronto i'm known by all of the comics here or at least most of them i guess but one of the things that's always been a challenge for stand-up comedy is just the accessibility of it people got to get babysitters they got to come out etc how cool would it be if you could have a live show where people fully tune in using augmented or virtual reality and they're just fully tuned into your show and they see you and it's not pre-recorded and so you get the feel of actually being in a comedy room and so there's no other feeling than being in a comedy room with sort of like the low ceilings and you're totally focused on the comic the jokes hit much harder and so that's another use case that i can see and that's just sort of like what i'm thinking about you guys tell me in the comments what sort of use cases you guys are thinking about from sort of like the metaverse and not just what meta can provide to you but just in general i don't think anybody can own the metaverse i think that's stupid but what i do believe is that it's coming and it's going to be in a form where facebook will have a piece of it or meta will have a piece of it but there will be a greater scale of it just like how the internet exists today and so from here you can see that the quest pro is really expensive right now at 1500 so it makes no sense for most people to buy it it ships out on october 25th i think they might ship out seven of them uh next year they're going to launch quest for business so this is what i'm excited about um, I really want sort of like the Windows suite sort of incorporated in this. And that seems to be what's happening because huge announcement. Mark Zuckerberg brought in the CEO of Microsoft to discuss the integration of Microsoft Teams Office. That's what I'm really excited about. Windows and Xbox Cloud Gaming. So I think that's going to be really exciting and it's going to put uh, Microsoft ahead. And once again, I always talk about Microsoft being future focused. Um, I like Facebook as an investment as well. So here's two companies that I really favor in this environment that are coming together. And so this is what they said. They said, we've been thinking about how to bring the power of Microsoft 365 and Windows 365 into the 3D spaces to really help drive productivity and enable you to create, communicate and collaborate in completely new ways. And I really like this, but once again, I think adoption will be slow. It might start with nerds like myself, but uh, for the regular people, I just don't think that they're going to adopt it yet. And so they went on to say that they, this is going to be great for anyone who wants to build out a virtual office on Quest Pro. So we'll see what they have in store for us. But uh, I'm a little bit excited. But, you know, I've said a thousand times in this video, I might be the only one. Now, you can see as the presentation was happening, the market does not seem to give a flying fig. Meta was down to its 52 week low during the presentation and so of course down 62 percent year to date and a couple of days after you can see that it continued to decline so previously it traded at around 130 now it's down around to 127 and so still even after uh the event a few days the market had time to absorb it they still don't care and they're probably right once again like you're gonna get three people that are excited about it but the rest of the community doesn't care it's not gonna push the needle 
advertising revenues matter for Meta or Facebook. That's a little bit challenged over the near term. And so they're going to have to deal with those challenges. They're going to have to really push their focus back onto their core business and just make sure that it develops out properly. And Mark Zuckerberg did talk about that in their Q2 earnings conference call. I will discuss what they see or discuss in terms of building out their ad business in their Q3 conference call when that comes. And so I will sort of like make a video and sort of keep you guys up to date. Now, overall, despite the near term challenges, I still see strong net free cash flow for the company. And the declining share price is really creating a compelling opportunity. Because if you just take that, you know, in 2026 at $15 of net free cash flow and you divide that by the current share price, you're looking at a 12% yield uh, overall. And so, I mean, it's not expensive. Uh, this is one of those rare times where you have sort of like growth and value converging into one opportunity. Uh, the only question that you have to answer is what is the long-term sustainability of a company like Facebook? I would say I would call that more into question in sort of like the TikTok world, but I still think one of the best ways to reach the consumer is Facebook, but Facebook is going away. This is sort of like an app that's used by older people. Instagram is being used by the younger generation, but it's harder to get sort of like demographic information on Instagram uh, for the users, uh, especially now with the iOS changes as well. So we'll see how this sort of plays out. But I would say that their toehold on sort of like that mass individualized marketing space has sort of like dwindled a little bit. And so we'll see how this sort of plays out into the future. I still think it's an incredibly valuable company. I would say that the moat has sort of dried up just a little bit. And so, you know, it is what it is. And before I go into the valuation guys, please note that approximately 80% of the watch time on this channel are from people that are not subscribed. So please, if you have the opportunity, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be notified when I release new videos. And you can see from my valuation that I am forecasting revenues are growing at a slower rate and I'm using a lower valuation multiple of 17.5 times earnings, which is my terminal multiple. And with that, I'm getting a share price valuation of approximately $230 per share. So compare that with the current share price of now it's lower than 130. It's around 126. You can see that the share price as a percentage of the valuation is reaching approximately 50%. So it's getting very compelling now. And how do you get access to this model and all the other models that the Patreons get access to? Well, you can get access to that at the lower tier of the Patreon. So join us. We have epic calls every month. And guys, Facebook is not sort of the only compelling opportunity in sort of like a future focused, you know, metaverse type space. One company that's building out the metaverse, at least from the chip perspective, is NVIDIA. And I actually just released a video on NVIDIA where I do believe that it's a very compelling investment opportunity. And you can access that video right here.